Today we're going to have a look at one of the greatest kickboxers to come out of Japan, the great Toshio Fujiwara. He was the first non-Thai to win a Thai stadium championship, Racha Damnan, and held an impressive record of 126 wins, 13 losses and 2 draws, with 99 of his wins coming by knockout. Fujiwara had a very unorthodox style, and I thought we'd have a look at how his combination of Kyokushin, Muay Thai and boxing actually became a blueprint for a lot of other kickboxers following him. We're going to start off by having a look at Fujiwara's stance and the footwork that he utilised throughout his career. Fujiwara didn't move like the typical Nakamoi, and in spite of coming up under Kyokushin co-finder Kenji Kurosaki, Fujiwara's footwork doesn't actually resemble the footwork of the karatekas of that time. In spite of the karatekas of the time being somewhat more bouncy and flowy than their Nakamoi counterparts, they still look stagnant compared to Fujiwara's bouncy, jerky, broken rhythm and constant moving. In fact, Fujiwara's style with the evenly distributed weight on both legs and the cadence that he utilizes seems to resemble that of the Soviet boxers of the time and their pendulum step. In addition to Fujiwara's unusual cadence, he also used a significant amount of stance which is going from orthodox to southpaw, as well as having excellent distance management. He'd also square up or flatten out and circle his opponents, leaving them guessing as to which side he was going to attack from. This strategy or approach is similar to that of the great Willy Pack, who's famous for his excellent footwork. Now here's a side-by-side -side comparison of Fujiwara and Willy Pep, so you can kind of see the similarities in their movement. As is evident, they both flatten out, they drop their hands, they move very loosely and attack from a distance from the outside. And it was Fujiwara's bouncy, jerky movements and combination of flattening out and attacking from both the southpaw and the orthodox as well as on the beat and on the half beat that made his footwork so impressive. Moving on to the evasive tactics and the guard of Fujiwara, it's worth noting that Kenji Kurosaki following the two first losses of Fujiwara started emphasizing low kicks and boxing rather than clinching and knees which are significantly more prevalent in Muay Thai. The focus of Kurosaki later became a staple for the Dutch style kickboxing. As a consequence of this, Fujiwara primarily fought on the outside. He had exceptional distance management and rarely stayed in the pocket for very long. He'd use copious amounts of feints in order to set up his attacks. When in the pocket, Fujiwara would use excellent head movement, frames and angles in order to get out. In spite of having adopted a lot of elements from boxing in terms of footwork and head movement, Fujiwara's guard was a lot closer to a classical Muay Thai guard. He fought with his hands high, palms facing out, and often opting to switch to a long guard if opponents were closing the distance on him. With that said, Fujiwara did also occasionally switch to a more classical boxing guard, sometimes dropping his guard entirely. So, moving on to the clinching, the throws and the sweeps. This is by far the area in which Fujiwara is the weakest. As I mentioned earlier, this is specifically an area in which Kurosaki had identified a core weakness of Fujiwara. And as you watch Fujiwara's matches, it becomes evident that this is certainly not his forte. A lot of his clinching looks more like wrestling. And I read that Fujiwara had 
opted to take wrestling classes in order to improve his clinching. Unfortunately, the wrestling doesn't seem to give Fujiwara the upper hand in the clinch. He's got very good takedowns from the clinch, but most of the time he'll just clinch and not really do anything with it. On the rare occasions where Fujiwara ends up on the rope, it's actually usually because of clinching. He either gets turned into the ropes or he ends up on the ropes pushing forward in the clinch. On the occasions where Fujiwara finds success, it's usually with a judo type throw, which was rather typical for the Kyokushin Karatekas competing with the ties at the time. However, Fujiwara often had success with sweeps that were set up from the outside and closing the distance. Because Fujiwara mostly fought on the outside, his striking isn't defined by long combinations in the pocket. Rather, he'd launch into punches and kicks, occasionally being completely airborne when kicking. Fujiwara's lead hook is therefore quite reminiscent of the great Floyd Patterson's gazelle punch, where he'd shuffle and leap into the hook. The left hand starts again. A punching technique which was also used by the great Marvin Hagler as well as Mike Tyson. This committance or overcommitments to the punch occasionally meant that Fujiwara landed with some precarious footing. Another element of Fujiwara's striking was his affinity for throwing multiple kicks with the same leg. And in true karate fashion, he also occasionally threw the side kick. In spite of Fujiwara's constant stance switches, he rarely actually threw his hands when in the southpaw stance. Most often, when he switched to the southpaw stance, he'd kick. Fujiwara's strategy is highly influenced by his style and vice versa. The choice not to clinch means that he pretty consistently stays on the outside. In spite of this, the aggression which is inherent in Kyokushin shines through. He is consistently pressuring forward and whenever his opponent gives up space, he takes it, constantly pressuring them, trying to force them to the ropes. He wasn't particularly good at cornering his opponents, and this meant that often he spent quite a lot of time running around after them, rather than being able to put them in the corner. What he lacked in cornering abilities he made up for in ring craft and distance control. His brilliant footwork, his evasiveness and his explosiveness made him a threat throughout any match and often Fujiwara would simply wear down his opponents. As with any great fighter, Fujiwara's strategy varied depending on his opponent. I'm making rather broad generalizations and I'm pointing out tendencies throughout his career in this video. And while Fujiwara sometimes fought more conservatively, notably against unpredictable and dangerous opponents, the key elements of his fighting style were still a play throughout his career. The tactics and the strategy of Fujiwara and Kenji Kurosaki where they combined elements from boxing, Muay Thai, on top of the Kyokushin Foundation, was close to a stroke of genius. It was essentially the foundation of an approach which, via Jan Plas, Jorn Blooming, Tom Harrink, and others, played a pivotal part in making Dutch kickboxing the success it was and continues to be today. And in turn, this has impacted kickboxing as we know it. And you can see Fujiwara's legacy in that. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, consider subscribing, liking, and sharing.